It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. William Bradford Huey, author and analyst, and Mr. Elliot Haynes of United Nations World. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Ambassador Leo Mattes, delegate from Yugoslavia to the United Nations. Mr. Mattes, over the last 10 or 12 years, there's been a, a great deal of bitterness in our country toward Yugoslavia, and perhaps a great deal of misunderstanding. And so tonight, I'm sure that our viewers would appreciate some rather frank statements from, from you as to the present attitudes toward the United States in Yugoslavia. First of all, sir, we are in, the, in this country are spending an enormous amount of money on armaments. And we are accused throughout most of Europe of uh, being more war-minded than other people. Yet your country is spending more than we are. Is that correct, sir? Well, I think uh, if you take it in uh, comparative uh, figures as to percentage of national income, I think that we have unfortunately be for been forced to spend uh, for defense uh, an even higher percentage of our national income than in this country. In other words, of all the nations outside the Iron Curtain, your nation has spent more of its effort, uh, devoted more of its effort to armament in the last few years than any other nation. I think it would not be an overstatement to say so. Mr. Matez, uh, what sort of armaments are you building? Well, uh, I am no expert in uh, military questions. I couldn't give you a list of products of our armaments industries. But I suppose that it would be a large variety of uh, light and medium weapons and other equipment. How many uh, divisions? Uh, have you got roughly? I know you don't know exactly, but... Well, again, I, I, I don't know these figures, but uh, I have heard that the number of about mm -hmm. 30 divisions has been quoted. I should say it might be a fair guess. 30? 30, yes. Well, why, sir? Why are you arming so rapidly? Who are you arming against? We are arming against no one. We are arming to preserve our independence. And uh, as you may know, and I suppose your viewers would know it, that the independence of my country has been uh, very strongly and rudely questioned uh, by the Soviet Union and countries in the Soviet bloc since 48. You, you are the one nation that has successfully broken away from the, from the Soviet bloc. Well, that's right. And, and, of course, that is the principal threat to, to your national independence yes, at the moment. Yes. How long do you think you can keep up this very large burden of armament? Well, this uh, very high burden and uh, the percentage of the national income as it was at its peak uh, in uh, last year, 23% of uh, the national income, that means 23 cents of every dollar earned in the country, uh, is a very heavy burden. And I think that any country and any economy would suffer heavily if it should continue for a longer period of time. Now, what is, what the, is the United States uh, helping you materially in this defense effort? Yes, uh, we are receiving assistance in uh, uh, armament equipment in, of various types from the United States. We are receiving uh, some assistance also from Great Britain and France, but uh, uh, the amount and number uh, we receive from the United States is by far higher. In other words, now, you're getting valuable assistance from us. First of all, you're getting military aircraft, are you not? Uh, yes, there are military aircraft, uh, tanks, guns, and uh, other equipment. And, and, and are we training some of your people in our country now? Well, we have officers who come to the United States uh, and uh, are being trained in the, the training camps and establishments of the United States. And are States. there American technicians now with your armed forces? And uh, th there is a number of technicians which accompany the equipment. Now, sir, uh, on our program recently, uh, Admiral Zacharias, a noted American intelligence authority, commented on the fact that perhaps Yugoslavia uh, knows more about what's going on in Russia than any of the rest of us. And I'm sure that our viewers would appreciate a statement from you on this. Uh, how do you, with uh, your knowledge of, of Russia, uh, how do you interpret some of the things that are going on in Russia now? 
Well, I think that uh, these developments uh, have mainly two causes. One is uh, the deadlock into which Soviet foreign policy has come, the failure they have had in many parts of the world. Well, one, and I think the first uh, major setback and uh, failure and defeat, if I may say, in a Cold War blitzkrieg was against Yugoslavia. And then they have suffered defeats in other respects. If we take the first part of this assembly of the United Nations with the resolution uh, submitted by India and voted on by almost all nations of the United Nations, uh, I think that they have found themselves isolated and in a very bad spot. But you on the other hand, I think that internal, the internal situation in the Soviet Union, and particularly the critical situation which has developed since the death of Stalin, has forced them mm, to uh, uh, try to, to, to make the government uh, more popular among the people in the Soviet Union and to find some way to acquiesce uh, the uh, resistance and resentment of the people in the Soviet Union. Well, I think that this necessity, the weakness internally and externally, has forced them to do this most. Well then, Mr. Matez, you, you think that their, their long-range aims remain the same, that of conquering as much of the world as they can? Well, I, uh, I should not like to express myself uh, uh, at this moment of what the aims and the final and long-run aims of Soviet policy will be. I think it is much more important than to guess on, on such things uh, to think about what the rest of the world has to do. And I think that uh, there should be made all efforts to, uh, to bring about an easing of tension in the world, but at the same time uh, to be strong enough to make every possible aggressor to respect our well, freedom and independence. Yugoslavia has uh, done a lot to ease tension and keep the peace in the last few years, hasn't it? Uh, that's what we are, what is the main basis of our foreign policy. Uh, but we think that it is not enough to wish peace and to wish easing of tension. As I said, we first must be strong, and that's why we devoted so much energy to building up our defense. Well, Mr. Matis, in the minds of our viewers, of course, here in the United States, there are a number of questions about Yugoslavia itself. Now, first of all, you are a communist nation, are you not? You yourself are a communist, are you not? Uh, yes, uh, I, I, but I, I think I should first uh, remind you that nowadays, and perhaps not only nowadays, uh, words are being used uh, uh, with uh, different meanings attached well, to Well, briefly, that. what's the difference between your type of communism and the Moscow type? Well, I think the, the first thing which I should say is that we do not think that we possess the stone of wisdom and the monopoly of knowledge. And in the question of the internal organization of the state, we do not believe that the citizens of the state do exist uh, to satisfy the aspirations of the rulers. Do you uh, allow any political freedoms? Uh, uh, there is in Yugoslavia a very free discussion on all issues of public life. And uh, may I say that this is the strength of our country. When the attack in the resolution of the Common Forum in 48 came, we immediately made it an issue of public discussion and the, the declaration of war, uh, Cold War I mean, on the side of Russia was published in all our newspapers together with the defiance. Dear Mr. Mm. Matez, uh, can the voters of Yugoslavia vote for more than one person for each office? Yes, they can and they do. Uh, in the uh, last elections, uh, for instance, for the legislature of one of the component republics of our federation for Serbia, the average was two and a half candidates to each post to be filled. During the existence of the Nazi-Soviet pact, when uh, Moscow and Hitler were allied, was, were, was your group an allied with, were you a party to the Moscow Soviet, to the Soviet Nazi pact? No, uh, I, d I don't quite understand. Uh, if, you, if you think of, uh, of the Yugoslavia as a state, there was made an attempt by the last pre-war government in Yugoslavia. I mean, I mean your particular group, the Tito group uh, in Yugoslavia. Were you supporters of the Nazi-Soviet pact? Uh, we were supporters of our own independence. And uh, as the situation developed since the pact between uh, Russia and Germany, uh, the danger for our own independence increased. And uh, 
uh, my political party undertook measures to uh, to to increase the defense power of the two, country. Two very brief questions, sir. First of all, are Americans welcome to come to Yugoslavia now? Yes, and, and they uh, do. And, and you? And they do. Uh, tourists can go to Yugoslavia yes. this summer? Yes, visas are being issued without uh, any permission being required from Central Africa. And is there any religious freedom in Yugoslavia now? Yes, there is a freedom for of worship and religion. And as a final question, sir, uh, we Americans realize that we even extended aid to uh, the present Chinese communist leader at one time, and then he turned on us and we've had to, we fought us. Now, what uh, uh, do you think that we should regard Tito and your government as a more reliable group uh, than other communist groups that we have been uh, perhaps disillusioned with? Uh, I, I should like uh, to quote a sentence uh, from a speech at a luncheon party I was present when the President Tito addressed uh, the British Foreign Minister Eden, and on, what, uh, and on that occasion he said that Yugoslavia has never let down its allies. Well, thank you very much for being with us this evening, sir. Thank you. The opinions you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Elliot Haynes. Our distinguished guest was Ambassador Leo Mattes, delegate from Yugoslavia to the United Nations. Big news for thrift-minded motorists is the outcome of the 1953 Mobile Gas Economy Run, just concluded. A race against time with honors for economy. The Mobile Gas Run was supervised by the AAA and officially timed over the entire 1,200-mile route by a large complement of Longines watches. Official watch for the contest board of the AAA. Longines watchmakers have ever been dedicated to the service of all to whom time is important and for rendering highest service, has won the highest honors that a watchmaker can aspire to. Each of these beautiful Longines watches of 1953 is made in every particular to be individually worthy of all these Longines honors, which include 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and highest honors for accuracy. Now at this season, when you may be considering the purchase of a very fine watch as an important gift for a wedding, an anniversary, or for a graduation, these are facts to remember. And remember, too, that if you pay $71.50 or more for a watch, you're paying the price of a Longines. Why not insist on getting a Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines with Norwatch. Thursday nights, the video theater on the CBS television network.